We sometimes hear these success stories of people saying that they were able to scale their e-commerce offering with Facebook ads and make tons of money. And I understand why that idea is so lucrative because you just think to yourself, well, if something is working, I just increase the budget in Facebook ads and over a sudden, instead of making $100 a day, I'm making $1,000 a day. But through years of experience and through years of doing Facebook ads, I have learned that that is not the case and Facebook is much more complicated than that. In this video, I wanna share with you tips from an email that I got from my Facebook marketing expert. So hopefully you will get a feel for how Facebook ads work and how you should structure your accounts, how you should structure your campaigns, ad sets, and all that good stuff. And with that being said, let's get right into this video. All right, so I'm gonna blur out her name here, but you can see that facebook.fb.com, that's the extension. So, you know, Facebook marketing expert, let's get started. So this is the email and you can see that there there are a couple of suggestions. There's a little bit about the CBO and then there are the best practices and here's what we discussed. So let's go through this one by one. For the suggested, she recommended I try 1% lookalike of each pixel event, okay? So this is not a secret to anyone. This is how you can scale horizontally your Facebook ads. This was, by the way, really helpful. Before this call, I was running my retargeting audiences on a seven-day window. And so she suggested that I extend the retargeting from seven days to 14 days, and that's exactly what I did. And I saw some really good results with this. So this is something that you might wanna consider. When you're setting up retargeting, don't choose a small window like seven days, but instead go for a larger one, maybe start from 14 days. The next thing she wrote here was about CBO, and there are two bullet points here, understanding the learning phase and learn how to leave the learning phase. So it says here that when Facebook starts delivering your ad set, we don't have all the data necessary to deliver it as efficiently as possible. To get that data, we have to show ads to different types of people to learn who is most likely to get you optimization events. This process is called the learning phase. Learn how to leave the learning phase. Your ad set needs about 50 optimization events after starting to run or since the last significant edit to complete the learning phase. So what this basically means is that each ad set has a learning phase. So when you launch an ad set, Facebook doesn't have enough data to know which group of people this is going to get you the best results. And so think about it as a big circle and then inside of this big circle, they have small circuits of different kind of pockets of people. And so Facebook is going to deliver your ad to a small number of each of these groups inside of this one big group, right? And they're going to see, okay, who is responding best to your ad? Once Facebook learns, then it's gonna know, okay, these people are giving you the best results, so we're gonna deliver more to these people. Because think about it, if your CPM is five euros, that means that in order to deliver your ad to 1,000 people, it's gonna cost you five euros. Let's say then that your daily ad spend budget is 10 euros, right? So you're going to be showing your ads to 2,000 people in a single day. And then let's say your potential reach is 200,000 people. And if you have a 10 euro a day ad spend budget, that means that you're going to be reaching about 1% of your target audience. So the next part here is about the best practices. So get the most out of CBO by doing the following. Optimize for true business outcomes. Select an optimization event that's re representative of your advertising objective. Consistency is key. Make sure your, all your ad sets optimize for the same goal or event. That's pretty cool. Control your creatives. Adjust how your creatives appear with multiple placements as needed. Begin big. Start with broad targeting and enable all placements. Now, this is where it gets interesting. This is what we talked about in the call, and this is what she suggested that I try in my own ad account. So first of all, target new audiences with a relevant size of potential reach. Let algorithm learn about people who are most likely to be interested in the product. Less is better. Choose good creative and encouraging texts. Stay consistent and extend your high-performing high ads. Reach relevant audiences by targeting interests or behaviors. Find potential customers by targeting people who are similar to your current or past customers with lookalike audiences. Test different audiences to find out which one are responding the best. Each time an ad is shown, our ads delivery system learns more about the best people and places to show the ad. 
The more an ad is shown, the better the delivery system becomes at optimizing the ad's performance. Best practices, learning phase during the learning phase, ad sets are less stable and usually have a higher CPA. To avoid behaviors that prevent ad sets from exiting the learning phase, we recommend you wait to edit your ad set until it's out of the learning phase. During the learning phase, performance is less stable, so your results aren't always indicative of future performance. By editing an ad, an ad set, or a campaign during the learning phase, you reset the learning or delay our delivery system's ability to optimize. This is so crucial. Once you have, once you launch your ad set or your campaign, don't touch it for like a week or two, right? Because you because you're going to mess up the learning phase and each time the delivery system shows an ad it learns about this a little bit more it's an ai thing right and then it becomes better it learns more and the uh, and the results are going to become better over time avoid unnecessary edits that cause ad sets to re-enter the learning phase avoid high ad volumes when you create many ads and ad sets the delivery system learns less about each ad and ad set than when you create fewer ads and ad sets by combining Combining similar ads and ad sets, you also combine learning. So this is talking about how many ads you have under each ad set. So basically, if you have less ads or less creatives under a single ad set, then you're, you're giving Facebook a better chance to optimize. You know, maybe you don't want to do one because that is like too little. You don't know if that's like the best ad, but then you don't want to do like, you know, 10 maybe even. You want to find somewhere that balance between, you know, not too little and not too high. Use realistic budgets. If you set a very small or inflated budget, the delivery system has an inaccurate indicator of people for whom the delivery system should optimize. Huh, interesting. Set a budget large enough to get at least 50 total conversions and avoid frequent budget changes, which can cause an asset to re-enter the learning phase. Try to increase budget by 20% only. Wait till next 72 hours at least. Facebook algorithm needs time to adjust your new budget and watch your campaign results. Test different audiences to find out which one is responding the best. Target your audience with a good creative and encouraging text. The learning phase is necessary to help the delivery system best optimize ads. So you shouldn't try to avoid the learning phase completely. Testing new creative and marketing strategies is essential for improving your performance over time. Extra tips. Try to have audience size in the 10,000s or 100,000s or less than 500,000s. Try to not go into the millions. The larger the audience, the lesser the quality. But this may not be possible if you're targeting heavily populated cities, countries, for example, London. Campaign duration. Seven days, two weeks at least. If you only run a campaign for only a few days, it may not have a proper chance to populate. You need to allow the campaign a fair budget and a fair amount of time to run. That is very important to note. Be careful of making too many edits to campaigns as they're running. If you keep editing a campaign while it's running, the algorithm doesn't like this. They're saying that. So your ad may not be shown as much. If you need to make edits, it's better to either start from scratch or duplicate the campaign. You will need 50 events to learn to exit the learning phase. And this is important. Just because the budget is increased, it does not guarantee that the cost per result will go down. Increased budget would increase reach. It won't reduce cost per result. If cost per result is an important metric, try to find your optimal budget that provides the lowest cost per result. Now, hopefully this gives you the feel for how the Facebook algorithm works and what it wants to see. So once again, kind of the main takeaways from here are, you know, it, the algorithm needs time to learn, right? If you are super impatient, you launch it, you are giving it like half a day and then you're looking at the results and you, you think the CTR is too low or the CPM is too high or whatever. And then, you know, you do some ch edits to it because you are coming up with some brilliant idea, it's not going to work like that. Like that you need to give it seven days at least, maybe up to two weeks, let the attribution do its magic, let the uh, data come in, and then you can make an objective decision about, okay, what do we need to change here and what do we need to see? Another important thing here at the end is that there is a sweet spot for your daily ad budget, right? I mean, 
you don't want to go too high and you don't want to go too low. If you're doing like five euros per day, that might not be enough. But if you're doing 150 a day, that might be too much, right? So a sweet spot that I found for myself is anywhere from 20 to 50 euros. You want to really try out the different things, right? Facebook is is both a science, but it's also an art. You need to get a feel for how it works because I found that Facebook works in like these you know, waves that, you know, one day it can give you good traffic with good conversion rates, but then the next one, it completely dips. Then another one, it can get you even more results. So I like to think about it as going in, in waves and, you know, as you increase your budget, you're going to see days when it dip, but then you're going to also see the days when it performs super well. So hopefully this was a helpful video. You got some value out of this if you did smash the like button if you haven't already subscribed to my YouTube channel. And on this note, thank you so much for watching this video. Till next time.